Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. I'm very glad that you all are all here with us this morning. Thank you for joining us for worship. Uh, it's never an easy thing to do, and I'm sure many of you are already aware of this, uh, but uh, our brother in Christ, Chet Rankin, died yesterday. I don't know if uh, that is public knowledge to a lot of you. I didn't want it to be a shock when we um, pray for the family and the friends of Chet uh, this morning. Uh, he had, there was an accident uh, late, or I, I should say early Saturday morning, um, and uh, he did not survive. And we, don't, we do not have any particular funeral plans yet. Um, that's still in the works. And so, you know, this is the place where we gather. This is the place where we hear God's word. Uh, and this is the place where we are assured of our guarantees. The guarantees of Christ crucified and Christ resurrected. And so we pray for Chet's family. We pray for his friends. And uh, we also pray for our church family as we... Uh, uh, acknowledge the loss that we have, but also uh, acknowledge the joy that we have in knowing that we have the resurrection of the dead in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so today, as I said, I'm glad you're here in worship with us to, this morning to put ourselves at the feet of our Lord, to hear his word, to receive his gifts, and to be built up as his congregation. That being said, our service this morning will base, be based around divine service setting three, if you're looking in your hymnal, that begins on page 183. Uh, and uh, as always, you can find the, the hymns, the readings, the responses up on our screens this morning. Uh, it is the season of Lent, and so we, uh, we omit and change a few things throughout our service. One of the changes is that we do not sing our typical hymn of praise, uh, but we do uh, sing, uh, we'll be using our first hymn to sing the first three verses, and then when the hymn of praise comes up, we'll sing the next three verses after that. So as we begin our worship today, we sing hymn number 571, the first three verses. God's blessings to you all in your worship this morning. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, 
of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. For this first Sunday in Lent, our Old Testament reading is from the 26th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. These are the instructions the Lord gives to the people as they enter into their promised land, uh, reminding them that the reason that they're there is because God provided for them, and they should make a sacrifice in remembrance of that. When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance, and have taken possession of it and live in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God has given you, and you shall put it in a basket, and you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name to dwell there. 
And you shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number. And there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliated us and laid on us hard labor. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground, which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house, you and the Levite and the sojourner who is among you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from the 10th chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Roman church. St. Paul is reminding us of the word that is in our hearts also comes to our lips. And so we believe what God has spoken to us and then we speak what we believe. The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. The first Sunday of every Lent, we uh, look at the the, uh, temptation of Jesus. uh, That Satan comes into the wilderness with him and tempts him, but Jesus overcomes temptation. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, And said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it had been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the gospel of the Lord. We now confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of a very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated, and I'd like to invite forward any children who'd like to come up for a children's message. Thank you. Come on up. Got plenty of room. All right, thank you. Go ahead and take a seat. Thank you. You can sit down in front of me here so I can see you. That'd be great. All right. Well, it is wonderful to have you all here with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. A little tired. That's okay. That's okay. This morning, I want to talk about a special word that we heard in our, um, in our epistle reading, our second reading for today. Hi, Ty. Come on up. I got the special word that I want to talk about is the word confess. You heard that word confess before? Maybe you don't use it very often. Does anyone here have an idea of maybe what the word confess means? What do you think? Jacob? Tell the truth. Very good. That's exactly the word to confess. Usually we think of confess as admit something you did wrong, right? So maybe, maybe your mom or dad finds something and, um, and like uh, maybe some wrappers behind the chair and they say, confess, did you eat that candy? You don't want to tell the truth, but you do, right? But the confession St. Paul's talking about is not admitting things that we've done wrong. No, he says that the word of God is in our hearts, which we believe, right? You, you hear the word of God here at church or at Sunday school, and the word of God enters your heart. But then he also says we confess with our lips. So confession isn't just about admitting you did something wrong, but as Jacob said, it's about telling the truth. And the truth is, I believe Jesus died for me. I believe Jesus rose for me. Those big, long words that we just got done saying, we call that a creed. Today was the Nicene Creed. Other days we use the Apostles' Creed. And maybe some of you are starting to hear that, and maybe you can say it, or maybe you hear your mom and dad say it. That's a confession. You're confessing what you believe is true. And St. Paul is saying that because we have God's word in our heart, we can also speak God's word with our mouth. Now, I know you're probably thinking, you know, that's a pastor's job. pastor's job is to speak of the word of God, and you're true. That's right. But it's also your job. Not necessarily to stand at a pulpit and preach, but to tell others that Jesus loves you, what you believe. And if you, if you don't quite know what to say, that creed that we use every single Sunday, I'm sure it's rattling around in your brain a little bit at least. That creed or the Apostles' Creed is exactly what we believe. So if you ever have trouble thinking about what it is that our church believes, you can always go back to the creed and say, this is what we confess. This is what we say is true. That God loves us, he made us, he saved us, and he is continuing to work in our lives every single day. So we have the word of God in our heart, and we confess it with our lips. Let's fold our hands and bow our heads and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for placing the word of God into our hearts. And we ask you, Lord, to, to help us to find ways to speak it, to confess it. 
uh, that we may tell others the truth, but also know what it is that we believe. And each and every day, help us to look to you for our hope and our love and our life. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you all very much for coming up this morning. Please be very careful as you stand up and head back to your seats. And as our young people do that, we sing our sermon hymn. Grace, mercy, and peace be to each and every one of you through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the more jarring aspects of growing up is starting to realize that not everybody does things the same way your family does, or that not everybody thinks the same way you do. We start off in life thinking that everybody has my perspective. Everybody sees things the way I see them. Everybody does things the way I do them. But the first time you go over to a friend's house or maybe to, to some other family member's house and it smells different and the food tastes different and, and things just work differently, you begin to feel a little estranged. You feel like things aren't right here. And as we grow up, we begin to accept that more and more because we begin to see that other people have opinions, other people have ways of doing things that are different than me, and that's okay. But even though we, we have those experiences, it's not always easy to take life from someone else's perspective, is it? We tend to assume that everybody is still experiencing the same things we are. They're still looking at life the same way we are looking at life. And if they look at it differently, we kind of think they're strange. But as we meet more and more people and get involved in more lives, we begin to become a little bit more understanding. That not everybody works in our world the same way. And we all have different ideas, plans, and different struggles. That there are for some people that maybe having a beer or two is not an issue, but for others, maybe once you've had one or two, you need five or six more. Or a person whose temptation to lust might lead them towards pornography, whereas another person might not even feel that pull. Or maybe you know somebody who is so easy at forgiving others, but it's really hard for you because you naturally hold grudges. We all have temptations. We all have these moments in our lives where there's something that pulls us in a direction we know is the wrong direction. And maybe the next person doesn't have that same struggle. Maybe that temptation is not an issue for them. And that's why today, in, in our first Sunday of Lent reading of Jesus and his temptation, it can be very difficult to talk about that word, temptation. Because we can only speak about it in generalities. Because every single person in this room 
has different struggles. Every person in this room has different temptations. What might be really difficult for you might be super easy for the person sitting next to you. But the fact of the matter is, regardless of what our temptations are, we have that thing in common. We struggle. We struggle with sin. That when temptation rears its ugly head, that pull, that desire to do what you know is wrong is so strong, it seems insurmountable. It seems like this is just who I am and I might as well just give into it. And this today, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is why we begin our Lenten journey with the temptation of Christ. You know, sometimes we view this account of Christ as a, perhaps a, a cautionary tale, or maybe as an example to us of this is how a Christian lives their life. They hear these temptations that Christ went through and he resists them. He pushes them away and he is victorious. While that's part of the story, it's actually not all of it. Now, I'm going to read to you again this account of Jesus' temptation. And it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, which is right after his baptism, and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, to you I will give all this authority and their glory for it has been delivered to me and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you. And on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from Jesus until an opportune time later. Whenever we view the work of Christ, even the temptation that he went through, we should always view it through the lens of what he is doing for me. I know that seems a little self-centered, isn't it? But Jesus is God. He doesn't have to prove himself to anybody. He doesn't have to prove himself to us. He doesn't have to prove himself to Satan. So why must he go through this temptation? Well, for the same reason he was born. He was born for us. The same reason he died. He died for us. The same reason he rose from the tomb. He rose for us. And, my brothers and sisters in Christ, he was tempted for us. Not just as an example of what to do in temptation, but so that we could flee to him in those moments. I know it seems counterintuitive to say this, but but Scripture speaks often of not resisting temptation. I know that seems strange. Because isn't that exactly what we're supposed to do? We're supposed to fight against temptation. Actually, Scripture uses a different verb. It uses the word flee. Flee from temptation. If you think about it, that makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? If you know that this building here has something that tempts you, what's the best thing to do? Go into that building and stand strong? Or to walk away? Isn't that what we tell our kids? That if they're in the midst of a difficult situation where bad things are going on, what do we tell them to do? Leave. That's what God tells us to do. But we also know that physically, it's not always possible to extricate ourselves from temptation. So what can the Bible mean by fleeing? Exactly what Christ is doing here. 
He is not just resisting temptation to show us what to do. He is resisting temptation because he is the one who has beaten temptation. So in those moments of struggle, in those moments of, of, of not sure what to do, we rest in Christ. We flee to him. Because when we're the ones resisting, it is our own power. And because we believe that it is not our own power that saves us, it is God's, we're going to fail. But we flee to Christ. We say, my God is more powerful than my temptation. My God is more powerful than my sin. And even my God is more powerful than death. Why can I say those things? Because our God has overcome death. By rising from the dead. He has overcome sin by dying and being crucified, paying the price for it only to rise again. He has overcome temptation by resisting temptation from Satan and casting him away from himself. So we think of Christ as our mighty fortress. A song that we will sing here in a little bit when we sing in our, uh, in our communion hymns. But we flee to him. We rest in Christ. Temptation makes us feel cornered. Makes us feel powerless. And where better to flee than to the one who has prevailed over temptation. The one who died and rose for you. Who took your sins. Who took your disobedience and wiped them away. We can say I am bigger than my temptations because my God is mightier than my temptations. Because in Christ, he has defeated them. This does not mean that we will go through life not being tempted to do the wrong thing. This does not mean that life is going to be easy. In fact, it's going to be difficult. But we can always look to Christ and say, he is the one who has defeated my enemies. He is the one who has defeated that which plagues me. He is the one who is my God now and forever. And his promises never fail. And so we rest in Christ. And we are under his secure and loving care each and every day of our lives. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise as we sing together the offertory. I invite you that if you haven't already, we have an offering plate at the back of church or in the narthex to place your offerings in, or we do use online giving through our website. We continue with the prayer of the church. Lord Most High, you are the dwelling place of your people. For the sake of Jesus, who suffered temptation and death for our redemption, be our refuge. Preserve us from every evil and plague. And strengthen us in faith so that we might be satisfied with your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, your son trampled the serpent underfoot and freed us from sin and death by his own death on the cross. Protect and preserve all whom you call to preach Christ and him crucified. Command your angels concerning them. Guard them in all their ways and bear them up for the sake of Jesus. Grant your missionaries opportunities to share your word and be especially with Paul Flo, Henry Witte, James Sharp, and Carl Hansen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all, you bestow your riches on all who call upon you. Bless all parents with wisdom as they teach their children your ways. 
that all in the household may confess with their mouths that Jesus is Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, govern the kingdoms of this world according to your holy and gracious will. Protect authorities from every temptation of the devil, who also falsely claims sovereignty over them. And equip them to curb what is evil and promote what is good. Bring peace upon our world and end all wars. Protect all those who serve the public good in firefighting, emergency response, law enforcement, professional medicine, and in the armed forces, especially Jesse Richardson and Mike Shannon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all mercy, you answer those who call upon you. Hear our prayers for all who are in need of healing and restoration, especially Phyllis Winterfeld, Vivian Johnson, Merlin Rosterman, Troy Ranking, Jerry Liston, Jesse West, Shirley Kane, Dolan Grasshoff, Todd Dagan, John Iles, Amari Brown, Ben Carlson, Dennis Dolan, Bruce Smith, and Joyce Boya. Be with them in their trouble and rescue them according to your gracious will. It is also with a heavy heart, O Lord, that we lift before you the family and friends of Chet Rankin, that in this very terrible time of tragedy, you would be our balm and our healing, that you would remind us of the hope we have in your resurrection, that we may look forward to the day of the return of your Son and know that we are in your hands always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your Son was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to suffer temptation for our sake as part of our redemption. Strengthen us when we are tempted, so that we do not take his obedience for granted, and teach us to rely upon your word as our defense against the evil one. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places. Give thanks to you, O Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Our Father, who art in heaven, how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Please be seated for our closing hymn.
Good morning. Once again, I'm glad you are here to worship with us this morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, a few announcements. Uh, this Wednesday, we will have our midweek Lenten service at 6.30 with a lunch to follow. Uh, before that, we will have our uh, confirmation class as per normal. There is a sign-up sheet in the back for those lunches. If you would uh, be interested in helping us serve those sandwiches after our Lenten services, that would be very helpful. Uh, today, also, uh, come on downstairs for fellowship time. And uh, if you would like to continue to do fellowship time, there are slots uh, on, the, on another sign-up sheet in the back uh, for you to sign up to serve, to make the coffee and to bring some treats. Again, I offer that if anybody doesn't quite know how to use the coffee maker, I'd be happy to, to give you a lesson in that. It's, it's pretty simple once you, once you got it. Um, uh, if you are a Thrivent member, please uh, remember to uh, designate your Thrivent dollars. You can always designate them to uh, St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Ireton. Uh, we got almost $2,000 last year um, from that Thrivent choice. It doesn't cost you a thing. Um, and you can also donate to other causes. That are, on their, that are on their listing. So please consider that. Um, next Sunday, remember to turn your clocks ahead an hour. Um, I know that's probably our least favorite time of the year, uh, but uh, just remember to do that. Otherwise, you're going to be, well, you're going to be off for the whole week anyway, but you might as well make it to church on Sunday, I guess. Um, okay, so uh, right now, the plan is that I'm going to be out of town starting on the 10th, which is Thursday. Um, and we're going to be gone until the 18th. Pastor Lowe will be here for emergencies. We will cancel that, mid, that midweek Advent Lent, Lenten service on the 16th, um, but he will be here for church on the 13th. Um, that schedule is subject to change uh, due to uh, the funeral that's coming up that we don't know the date of it, uh, but this is probably the basic shape my vacation will take, uh, but just not quite sure if we're going to have to bump it a few days. Whatever, we'll do what we have to do. Um, so basically, this, unless it changes drastically, Pastor Lowe will be the person, if you do have a pastoral emergency, starting around Thursday or Friday this week uh, from Trinity will be the, the pastor to contact because I'll be in Texas. All right. Uh, are there any other uh, uh, specific announcements that I need to highlight today? Okay. Well, thank you very much for being here. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ sustain you this week and always. God's blessings.